Hi, I'm Isaac Orr, and I research the intersection of public policy, geology, and economics for the Heartland Institute, especially as it relates to hydraulic fracturing, or fracking. I want to talk about something many people are probably not aware of, the impact of fracking on global warming. It's nearly impossible to discuss hydraulic fracturing without touching on the topic of climate change. Fracking has allowed us to produce large quantities of natural gas, and natural gas is shown to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. Burning natural gas emits half as much carbon dioxide as burning coal. Increased domestic use of natural gas was the main reason the United States reduced its carbon dioxide emissions more than any other country in the world between 2005 and 2013. And that increased usage was made possible by fracking, which has tapped into large reserves of natural gas in the United States, greatly increasing supply and lowering prices. Thanks to fracking, U.S. emissions are now the lowest they've been since 1994, falling 13 percent between 2005 and 2013. According to the Energy Information Administration, in the spring of 2015, carbon dioxide emissions from American power plants reached their lowest level since 1988. At that time, natural gas surpassed coal as the largest source of fuel for generating electricity for the first time ever. Natural gas accounted for 31 percent of electricity generation in the U.S., compared with 30 percent for coal. Without fracking, natural gas never would have been able to compete with coal in terms of affordability. Natural gas has already reduced our overall carbon dioxide emissions in the United States, but we're still waiting to see if nuclear, wind, and solar power can cause a similar reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. Generating electricity using nuclear energy provides near zero greenhouse gas emissions, but nuclear power plants are expensive to build, and the Nuclear Energy Institute reports the permitting and construction of these plants takes close to 10 years. Environmentalists promote wind and solar as a way to achieve a carbon-free economy, but despite decades of subsidies and billions in taxpayer dollars, wind and solar only produce about 2% of our total energy consumption. Wind and solar also pose serious challenges in reliability. According to a study by the Manhattan Institute, wind turbines generate electricity only about 34% of the time. And of course, solar power can't be generated at night or on cloudy days. These forms of energy have serious obstacles preventing them from generating a more significant portion of our energy portfolio. Today, there's no more effective way to immediately and affordably reduce the amount of carbon dioxide being emitted into the atmosphere than increased use of natural gas. And that transition will only be possible through fracking. This is Isaac Orr of the Heartland Institute.